Good morning, my soccer universe, to the last round of 16 uh, Women's World Cup update, which featured two Europe versus Asia matchups. And I can say it from the beginning, I have my dream quarterfinal, meaning that one of my two favorite teams will be for sure in the semifinal, which is probably more than I could expect. I never thought that I would be talking that much about Italy, who had the first game against China, played in Montpellier. Um, won the Serie A for a sold the crowd, but a very good crowd. Um, and, you know, lots of Italian fans making their way over. Uh, the game started with Italy being absolutely um, on the front foot going forward, uh, putting China uh, into trouble. Uh, Jacinti already in the 10th minute made it 1-0, but she was offside. Then I didn't see that. I, I actually started right after that, uh, watching the first half, and I saw at the beginning of the second half. Uh, and then um, Italy comes again, makes an uh, attacking move. Um, over the right, I think it was over Bergamaschi, uh, cuts in, and you always have the feeling, yeah, they, they have a, a woman advantage. Uh, but cannot really get the shot off, but in the end the ball falls at the feet of Giacinti, who puts it into the net 1-0 in the 15th minute, and Italy really controlled that game at that point. Um, it was only until the 28th when, uh, I think it was Wang Zhuang, uh, who gets the first uh, shot on goal for China, which would have been really dangerous if Giuliani would not have saved it. And from that moment on, the game started to a little bit swap over to China. Although Italy had, again, two great chances. Giacinti makes her... is a little bit like Inzaghi, kind of uh, always living a little bit on the offside line because she has another uh, good chance, which was called back for offside, where she just missed. Bergamaschi uh, has also a run on the right side where she can get a clear on goal with a good shot that is uh, saved by Pang Ximeng. And then it was really China who was pressing, pressing, pressing towards the end of the first half. And I really had the feeling um, it is a matter of time until China scores. Italy was really going back and the most uh, notable thing happening was that Galli had to come in for uh, Girelli, who has been actually sensational in the group stage. So I thought, ooh, not sure about that. However, my nerves were calmed in the 49th minute when Galli uh, has the ball outside the box and takes a shot, puts it into the corner, uh, no way of saving it, and it's tunnel Italy, which basically kills off the game. China tried, I mean, I didn't see it anymore, by the way. China tried a little bit, but uh, Italy more or less quite well defended and moves on to the next round, uh, which is absolutely, absolutely sensational. Yes, the Italian league now, the big teams are joining, and maybe this is similar to Spain, that Italy also gets now a boost in women's soccer, finally. Because Italy has been playing at the Women's World Cup for a long time, but never was really a force. They seem to be not top team, but you know, the typically Italian team. Defensively sound and for going forward, there's quite some stuff going on. The second quarterfinal between the Dutch and Japan was an incredibly tight affair. Uh, a really good game overall, I have to say. This was uh, really very interesting to watch. The Dutch started out again, similar to Italy, the Dutch started out going forward, being really uh, uh, dangerous going forward. And uh, also I find it very in interesting that the Dutch team is also a little bit more total football, the Italian team is a little bit more hanging back and on defense. I mean, you can really see this also in the women's game, uh, these old cliches. Anyway, uh, Dutch Having uh, chances, having most of the, of, of the possession, really putting Japan on the back foot in front of a crowd that was mostly in the Dutch camp, although there were quite a few Japanese fans too. Um, the first goal comes from Martens, who didn't have a great World Cup so far, um, where a corner kick is taken and she backheels it through a defender's feet to get the slightest of deflection and goes into net. But actually, a really beautiful goal by Lieke, Lieke Martens, who I think two years ago was a, a World Player of the Year. Um, she had a great Euro Tour to the tournament, and yeah, now I hope she's finding her form back. Uh, 
And then the Netherlands continued going forward and I always had the feeling of Van der Sanden was working really hard and also Miedema uh, was uh, quite the danger. But I couldn't really get that many uh, chances on. And it was actually a few minutes after this, I think 20th and 25th, that uh, Japan had a big chance for an Ike equals where they just hit the outside of the post. So uh, it could have been 1-1. One, one. And then you could see that the Japanese game is, which really is, a, reminds me a lot about the Spanish around 2010, with a lot of short passes, really nice passing moves. And they really... Uh, were then claiming back from the Netherlands uh, possession and also uh, the momentum. And through a really wonderful attacking move, Hasegawa uh, is suddenly clear on goal and with a quality finish puts it into the high corner. It's 1-1 at the half. At that moment, maybe a little bit lucky for Japan because the Dutch were a better team. However, they in the second half made sure that this was absolutely just equalizer and Japan should have taken the lead. Uh, especially in a sequence roughly from the 70th to the 85th, Japan had four or five really quality chances. One hits the bar, uh, two are uh, saved by Van Venendal uh, at, at, at the last minute. I mean, she proved to be the goalkeeper that you need uh, in uh, these tight seal situations. And so it's rather lucky that the Netherlands are still hanging on one to one. Uh, Berenstein comes on uh, and she already caused some trouble uh, in the a game against Canada and she again causes trouble. It gets in the, into the box, the uh, ball Suddenly there's a lot of Dutch attackers in, in, in the box and I think it is a shot that goes on the hand of Kumagai. Um, that is unfortunately a clear penalty. Was, was it deserved at that moment? Maybe not. But Martin steps up, puts it home and it is 2-1 for the Netherlands who kind of have an escape a little bit. Um, you got a feel for the Japanese team uh, who couldn't get the equalizer. On the other side, I am super happy that the Dutch made it to the quarterfinal. Um, I cannot tell you how happy I am that we have an Italy against Netherlands uh, quarterfinal. I would love to have this in the semifinal or final, of course. But given that those two are not the top, 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 top teams in the women's game, having one of these in the semifinal, I'm absolutely floored and happy about that. Well, so we have coming up um, the... Following quarterfinals, we have Norway against England on the 27th, on 28th, France, United States, and then on Saturday, first Italy, Netherlands, and then Germany, Sweden. And yeah, I remain that the upper half looks uh, tougher, but it's also interesting how this lower half will go. Anyway, let me know what you thought about these games. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.